Overdoses from painkillers and heroin are just about as deadly as car crashes in Minnesota. Last year, 336 deaths were linked to the use of opioids or heroin. 411 people died in crashes. Fatal facts like that drove a local hospital to find another way to treat pain. Abbott Northwestern is the first hospital, not only here in Minnesota, but the entire nation, to offer acupuncture in the emergency room. Beth McDonough got unprecedented access to show us how it works. I just had the most intense pain um, in the side of my throat and my neck. Chris Tanita couldn't swallow, couldn't sleep, couldn't take it anymore. Anxious and afraid, she came to the emergency room for relief. Mainly I want pain meds um, for my fever. Something to numb her suffering. What she got at Abbott Northwestern Hospital was an option. I talked to your doctor and he wants me to come and see if you want to try a little acupuncture today to help make you feel a little more comfortable. Really? Where are you going to put them? I'm going to put some in your hands okay. and in your arm and maybe one in your ear. Okay. Okay. Instead of getting a pill, she got poked. Adam Reinstein is an acupuncturist. He inserted the tiny, thin needles in certain spots to stimulate nerves, muscles, and tissues. I'm just uh, triggering their body's own natural healing ability. So our bodies produce their own painkillers, our endorphins. This may help release them. Within 30 minutes, Tanita felt the flare-ups fade, her fever go down, and her throat relax. Do you feel like this has helped you with your pain? Yeah, I mean, I literally, I couldn't talk three and a half hours ago. At this hospital in the heart of the city, ER doctors treat almost 50,000 patients a year. Uh, it's a place where people are first exposed to painkillers uh, and also a place where people who already have addiction uh, will come to acquire additional pain medications. Abbott Northwestern's research points out 49% of patients who visit the ER either get painkillers as part of their treatment or they get a prescription for them when leaving. What's more, a national study shows 15% of patients who are naive to painkillers and exposed to them in the ER for the first time become addicted within six to nine months. That led Abbott Northwestern to launch a first of its kind study to determine whether acupuncture is effective when used in addition to or instead of painkillers. So I think we're at that point where patients are not so concerned about what's gonna reduce the pain, but can something reduce the pain? And if acupuncture can do it, they're in for it. Reinstein checks the patient board, talks with doctors, and makes the rounds, looking for someone seeking pain relief. Since the study started in 2013, a majority, 89% of 850 patients, have been willing to give acupuncture a shot. We're actually seeing less use of opioids in the ER when people receive acupuncture. He says 20% less, saving the hospital a lot of money. What's more, some patients leave here without a prescription at all. I don't think the evidence is sufficient. Yet Dr. Stephen Barrett openly questions the value of acupuncture. And the scientific consensus is that acupuncture is not particularly effective for pain. It's not better than a placebo. He practiced medicine for 35 years and now runs a number of consumer health websites, including AccuWatch.org, where he refers to acupuncture as needles with nonsense. Listen, I don't believe in ghosts either, and that's the equivalent of a, of a ghost in your body. Yet folks at Abbott Northwestern believe the benefits are very real. The idea is to stick it to pain by combining Eastern remedies with Western medicine. You ready? Yeah. We were there as Jack Weston was being released from the hospital. He wanted us to know he's tried both and prefers one over the other. How would you compare the acupuncture to medicine? Well, I, I think I'd stay with the medicine. If, if, if push came to shove. Why? Well, because I think it's most likely more effective in the long run. However, staff at Abbott Northwestern believe acupuncture in the ER could reduce not only throbbing aches, but the use of painkillers and the number of prescriptions doctors write, benefiting folks inside the hospital and even more outside of it. I think it's more societal costs. If we can avoid people being dependent on opioids and all the consequent increases of hospitalizations and readmissions after that, I think that's where the benefit is. How's that? Okay. Yeah. As for Chris Tanita, she's just as afraid of addictive meds as she is the pain itself. Okay. You're needle free? At least for me and how I want to live, I'd prefer not to take pills. You know, like the less 
foreign weird stuff in my body, the better. And Tanita went on to say part of what she liked about the program, she got to choose whether she took part. Now this can be a one time fix or it can turn into ongoing treatment. When a patient leaves, they can get a referral to the Penny George Institute. It's an outpatient clinic or folks can go to any of the 584 licensed acupuncturists in the state. The program lasts about another year at the hospital and it's in the process right now of applying for a federal grant to continue and broaden that study, guys. All right, thank you, Beth. And acupuncture is covered by some, but not all health plans in Minnesota, and only for certain medical conditions, often only after all other options have failed. Local acupuncturist Bonish Balash hopes to change that. She drafted a proposal that's being considered at the state capitol this session. It calls for state-regulated insurance plans to expand coverage of acupuncture to cover both acute and ongoing pain. People are suffering. They need options other than the pain pill. And so that's kind of what motivates me. Because, you know, to me, it's just that we have a pain problem in the U.S. Bolash believes that acupuncture could help combat the painkiller epidemic, but she says we also need to focus on the pain problem itself. All right, on this warm.